G'day guys, Mac with the Our Circle. Sorry for the limited videos lately. I've just been busy at work and spent the weekend away hunting, training up the young dog. Uh, obviously, it's very important to train a hunting dog early and it takes a lot of time and effort and energy. And so, I've got to be more committed to that than the beloved hobbies I have like this one. So, since I haven't put out a video in a week or so, I thought these models have finally released. Let's actually have a look at them. And I haven't looked at them yet. So uh, I guess I'm doing this live in a way. So some Space Wolves. Fucking, I'm sick of these models. I don't get why they need to have... These models would look so much better if it wasn't for the fucking shins. It just needs to be said. They're terrible. And I don't know why they're persisting with it at Games Workshop. Just turn it into a normal... Grieve. It doesn't need to be a huge thick grieve like other Space Marines, just the whole ankle bootlet, uh, three quarter pants look is just fucking awful, and I don't think I know anyone that likes it. Alright, right now. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna go with what I said when I first looked at it. The model looks fine. What looks shit? is the way he's jumping off the rock. And I called it a nitpick, because I'm like, well, you can't really get into that position. I noticed a few people defend it by saying, oh, it really is a nitpick. It's, it's not that much of a nitpick. I mean, how did he get into this position? Where he is jumping, pushing off the forward facing of the rock. And a few people said, well, it's okay, he's got cleats on his feet. See those claws? They're holding him on there. Well, how does one create claw marks in front of the foot in the direction they're not moving from. See, if you leave claw marks on something, that's because you gripped it, and as you gripped it, your claws would dig in. So how do you grip it from the direction uh, that's going with gravity, not against it? It's almost like he slid back up the rock, moonwalking it like Michael Jackson. Is that it? Is that what happened? Yeah. So it's not that much of a nitpick, it's just this weird fad they've got at Games Workshop of, of putting every single character now on top of a rock to really make them stand out. And, and really, I don't think there's a need for it because, well, characters just naturally tend to stick out because they've got so much more going on than those around them. So, I mean, again, take a, take a step back here. If you put Ragnar on the ground amongst all these guys, do you think he would blend in? No. His armor is different, but look at a surface detail. What about the fact he has a giant wolf pelt cloak and a backpack festooned with gilded wolf's heads and a giant top knot and a stonking grey double bladed chain sword painted bright yellow? Okay, as well as a pretty flash Harley Davidson uh, belt buckle. He is going to stick out, whether he's leaping off a rock implausibly or not. And frankly, I'm sticking with it. I think that it's defying the laws of gravity. If the claw marks are going to be on the rock, they would be coming from above the foot placement, where he's slid down into position and the claws have dug in. They can't dig in from a direction that he'd be sliding towards. They should be coming from the direction he's sliding away from. That's how things dig in. I just... Uh... Again, you can design something in a computer, or even sculpt it in real life, but if you don't understand the mechanics of how it's working, it doesn't quite... It doesn't look quite right. Alright, so the Orcs. Um, nothing amazing going on with any of these models. Perfectly serviceable, don't get me wrong. Um, just like, meh. Yeah, yeah, they're fine. Uh, Gazkel himself. Well, again, even this guy, who's functionally a dreadnought now, because... Well, frankly, his body's tiny. I mean, look how small his head is. Um, going off the size of the orcs around him, his head's pretty much the size of any other orc. So what, his body's getting bigger, but his head's staying the same size? Well, no. It seems that his armor is basically giving him all of his mass, from the looks of it. And... I want to see the opposite. Now, I said this in the other video, that Gazkal himself should be big and imposing 
not the armor he's in. Gaskull is terrifying because he's a gigantic orc who's pretty cunning and pretty smart. And he's also wielding giant power cores, which is his way of hurting you. But he himself should be physically imposing. Instead, what this looks like is like the orc equivalent of uh, a dreadnought, almost. Um, not even a dreadnought. One of those new not dreadnoughts they have where the Primaris is actually driving it, like the, like the baby carrier, for example, from Grey Knights. Um, Nemesis Dread Knight, or whatever it's called now. That's what this looks like. You have a little, or I say little, I mean he's big for an orc, I suppose, but he looks basically about the size of a knob or standard war boss. Just his armor is bringing him up to this giant size. And then he's got big clumps of like concrete on his base that he's stepping off. And why is he stepping on that one to the left? Okay, his left foot is perched back and up. Why? If he came down a hill or something, that's fine, but that's not a hill, that's just literally a column. It's cracked on this facing, so it stops there, that's the entire column. Why is his foot on it? It's like Gang's Workshop can't make a fucking model now without putting the character on top of something. I mean, let's go through some of the recent characters they've released. Abaddon, okay, uh, what course, Sarrow? Come. All right, strike. What else have we got here? Jane Zah, yeah. Didn't they release Draza with her? Uh, I gotta remember how it's spelled. Uh, who else? Who else have they released recently for? I suppose they did Kalgar sort of recently. Alright, what was that Imperial Fist dude? Stonkin' Chonky Fist Boy. Um, oh, let's just go Imperial Fist. Yeah, that's the bloke we want. And I. Okay, so let's get a range of different characters here. Let's see, Abaddon, stepping on a marine. Corsair Khan, stepping on a rock. Cave and Shrike, stepping on the corner of a bunker. Uh, that's just a bad model in general. Uh, Jane Zah, floating on her hair, which is resting on top of a pebble. Dreza, or Dreza, or however you want to pronounce it, uh, standing on two different rocks, going in two different directions. Um, I bet he really blends into a crowd. Yeah, with <laughs> his knees are the height of Inky by faces around him. Like, fuck him. Kelgar on a rock. This bloke, uh, what even is that? Some sort of, like, crenellation, like on a castle, but for some reason buried in the ground. Apparently he's an archaeological uh, professor um, who happened to stumble across a buried castle. Good times. And uh, this Iron Father, Feros, is uh, standing on an iron girder because, because uh, I mean, look, a girder, he's an iron hand, get it? Look, a fortification, he's an imperial fist, get it? Look, Kalgar, standing on uh, the legacy of the Ultramarines or something? I don't fucking know. It's, I mean, it's kind of bearable on these characters. Like, just a little rock, like, Kelgar here. It's perfectly fine. I like the model. Um, but this, like Dreza? Ugh, fuck me. What's Age of Sigma got going in this fucking realm at the moment? I mean, all these characters are mounted on implausibly large rocks for no fucking reason. Oh, surely Age of Sigma has had some fancy ones lately. What have, what have we had for releases in Age of Sigma? Or new releases. Let's try that. Uh, nothing interesting going on there. Uh, ta -ta. Oh, did they release those new High Elves yet? I saw some implausibly silly stuff there. No, it's all old stuff. 
You notice all these old characters too, like they have a little bit of a rock on the base maybe, but that's it. Like it's really subdued until you get to like the Assassin on the bottom left, which is a pretty new model. I think that's an 8th edition, uh, sorry, yeah, 8th edition fantasy, pretty sure. The Warden King, isn't that the old Belagar Iron Fist model? I oh, could be totally wrong. Was it Belagar? Uh, I forget. Eh. Pretty subdued, pretty subdued, but these, these are all old models. Alright, what's some of the newer stuff then? Um, just trying to get an idea in my head, like how over the top we're getting. Donna Deepkin, they're sort of new. About a year old now, what have we got? Yeah, these are pretty excessive. Um, see, the lesser characters are okay, but Ida One, obviously. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a bit different. It's a magical fantasy setting, so it kind of works. The fact he's got that giant water cloak. Um, Red Alliance Chaos. Have they released anything new for Chaos lately? Not really. Like, not character-wise. Death. Oh, yeah, they had um, the Assyriac Bone Reapers. Assyriac Bone Reapers, whatever. Yeah, he's... Characters are mostly pretty subdued, I'd say. Maybe this Mortazan Bone Shaper in the middle there is a bit excessive, standing on that giant skull. Um, yeah, they're all they're all fine. I mean, Cat Cat across Mortark Necropolis. It doesn't matter that he's on that giant base because it makes a lot of sense because it's actually a diorama telling a story. So, Age of Sigma, I guess I'd have to give it a free pass. It's it's 40k that I've got a problem with. Um, yeah, just... <sighs> characters in implausible sculpts. And, and I mean, some people say, look, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. It's fictional universe, blah, 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 blah. Well, okay, that doesn't matter to you by your judgment criteria... For me, though, it does matter because my way of getting involved in these universes and immersing myself is realism. And frankly, 40k is not that unrealistic. It's grounded in reality and then dials things up to extremes. But it's, it works as a universe because it's got a, a foundation in realism. If it didn't, it, it wouldn't work. So it's taking concepts like medieval-era uh, crusades... And saying, what if uh, instead of being European knights, they were giant superhumans, for example. And it's it's running with that concept. That's why there's such a big focus on melee combat and that kind of thing, as opposed to fighting like they would fight now by using, you know, unconventional tactics, perhaps. Uh, ambushes, camouflage, sniping, uh, calling in artillery strikes on enemies at a distance, trying not to engage them in full frontal assaults and suicide charges, that kind of thing. It's basically medieval warfare. You know, you could almost treat the firearms of 40k as something like a crossbow, and there's numerous reasons for this, but, you know, the foundation is there and the realism, and it's saying that, you know, either the enemies are so supremely tough thanks to their armour or their biology or some unseen force like psychic powers that, you know, a firearm is not always the way to take down an enemy. A lot of the time you have to get in there, get up close and personal and literally dismember them with swords and stuff. Okay, cool. And that's the basic premise. And then it takes up to another level by saying, you know, you're fighting aliens, okay? Well, aliens could be out there and they could be any shape or form, okay? And then it goes it up to another level by saying, oh, well, you know, some of these aliens have psychic powers. It's like, oh, well, you know, lots of different shows over the years have experimented with psychic powers, some more, some less. In this universe, you know, there's consequences to them. You can have psychic powers, but if you don't use them wisely, it could really fuck up your day. It's like, oh, okay, so there's some ground rules here. And, you know, that's how you build a universe. And 40K has a fantastic universe. Um... Sigmar is getting a decent universe. I personally don't really have much against the game, just its implementation upon initial release I have a lot of problems with. Uh, and also the names are terrible. <laughs> um, but yeah, and 40k is swinging that way hard. But yeah, look at Ragnar right now. 
does his model need that rock? If so, why? And if not, why? <laughs> uh, he doesn't need the rock. And if he's going to stand on a rock or something like that, change the angle of it or put it close to the ground. It doesn't need to be knee high up in the air or something. Um, because how he got on it in the first place becomes implausible. Same as Gaz Cull. He doesn't need to have that leg up and back standing on a rock or column or whatever. It doesn't, it's unnecessary detail. It's not adding anything to the model. I feel like it's being done for the sake of adding more more shit going on and again you look at the humble origins like if you I, I type in a rhino here right you open up a rhino tank and then you compare that to like a oh, what's those bloody horrible grav tanks the marines have uh repulsor repulsor aren't they sorry So, this here, you look at it and you're like, oh, that's like an APC. That's something that's out there on the battlefields of today, and why would it exist in the future? Well, for the same reason. It's armoured, and it can transport troops. It's got a small amount of firepower, but it's, it's, it's really only just to drive off um, attackers like, from crawling on the vehicle and such. It's not there to provide actual support firepower. Okay, cool. That very thing exists in current warfare. Therefore, it's not hard to take a leap and put that into a sci-fi universe in the far distant future because you know what sort of vehicle it is. You know just by looking at it what sort of role is and it all makes perfect sense. But then you look at something like this and you're like, oh, okay, is that a tank? It's certainly armed like a tank as it's covered in guns, but then what are all these big plates? Oh, they they make it hover. Why are they all sticking out in every direction? Wouldn't that be really easy to damage or destroy? Like, the tank could be the most heavily armoured tank in the fucking world. But if those uh, repulsor fields cop a hit for an artillery shell or something, or concussive blast forces, that's probably going to end really badly for them. And you could make the argument that, well, any projectile coming in towards those repulsive fields will be pushed away by their repulsive nature, well, in which case, equal and opposite reactions, that tank would then be being pushed in the opposite direction just as fast as it's pushing away a projectile. And if it's a big projectile, or even another vehicle, that's going to end really badly for the repulsor tank. Okay, why has it got all these rocket pods and launchers and such all around the sides of the vehicle and the turret? I don't know. Okay, why has it got all these antennae right behind the cupola where the commander is that when he swings around, he'll just take them out? That's poor placement of them. Uh, what is it? Is it a tank? Well, no, it's got these large doors and hatches. It's clearly some sort of transport. But then why is it so heavily armed compared to something like the Rhino? And then if you take the Rhino and then you, you go up to that next level and you go look at something on the Land Raider, you look at a Land Raider and you're like, oh, that's kind of like, you know, one of those World War One era tanks, like the old British Mark 1s, Mark 4s, you know, that kind of thing. It's got the big octagonal tracks and, oh yeah, it's got some firepower, but there's a clear aggressive assault ramp at the front, side hatches. Oh yeah, I get what this tank's for. But then they're saying, hey, you can have this tank, which is somehow slightly smaller, packs way more firepower. It's, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work for me. The Primaris Repulsor is a tank that would work really well if it was more like a Land Raider. If you wanted to make it a heavy tank, have the side hatches disappear and replace those with sponsored weapons. You can't have a giant turret in the top and then logically have a giant turret basket hanging beneath it and still say this thing's got transport capacity. That's not how vehicles work. At least with something like an Imperial Chimera, the turrets are very small. They look like a one-man turret, which there's plenty of in real life. A one-man turret could have a very small turret basket, and it's located very far forward on the tank with heaps of room left in the rear to put troops in. Okay, that makes sense. This doesn't. This makes no sense to me, and that's my big struggle with 40k. So I know it started out as me looking at um, Ragnar and uh, Gazkal, but 
it's ending with me going, the fuck is the design aesthetic here they're going for? Because they're losing the realism. The problem with computers, as I say, is they're a wonderful tool. Wonderful tool if used wisely. But just like Peter Jackson making the Hobbit films, if you give someone the chance to put a bunch of extraneous shit in that's unneeded, because they can plug it all in with very minimal effort thanks to computer technology, this is what you end up with. Because, frankly, these the stowage is not a terrible thing on the sides of the vehicle, but it seems excessive. I mean, look at the amount of stowage you'd see on World War II era tanks. Modern tanks don't cover the sides in stowage. All the stuff is stored in actual um, compartments that you can open and close on the tanks, or in a basket on the very back of the turret. That's usually where all the soldiers' personal kit is stored. They need to go look at real tanks again, and, and extrapolate them into their sci-fi universe, much how the Rhino and the Land Raider are extrapolations of realistic tanks of, you know, the past. They need to do that again. And then they need to stop putting gigantic fucking rocks underneath all their characters, because, you know, characters don't need them. They'll stick out anyway. Like, what's this guy in Primaris Lieutenant in Phobos armor? With his little skull helmet. What's he pushing off? He's doing the same thing as Ragnar. He's pushing off something that's in the wrong direction for him to be pushing off. It's physically not... Not impossible, just not probable. It's a very awkward position to get yourself into for very little reward. I mean, every character is... Every fucking Marine character. They're all standing up as though. It's like this one Primaris Lieutenant with a power sword in the middle right now. He's like the odd man out. Because librarians stand on a rock. Captain Phobos armor on a rock. Lieutenant Phobos armor on a bit of debris. What are the other characters like? Oh, Apothecary on a rock. Entire fucking sniper team on rocks. Um. What have we got? What have we got? Where are more Primaris characters? Let's see how many are on rocks. Hey, there we go. Primaris Librarian, not on rock. Primaris Chaplain, not on rock. So. It seems to have become endemic. Every character in the last few months has been on rocks. But everything six months and back wasn't really on rocks. So at what point did it change over? At what point did putting every character on some sort of crazy rock take off? I don't know. I don't know. It's just annoying me. So anyway, nitpicky. I don't care. I like what I like. That's the whole point of me talking about these models. You enjoyment of the model is not based on my enjoyment of the model. You are free to like each and every one of these things and think they're the best thing ever and love the rocks and love the poses and I'm not taking that away from you. I'm just saying it doesn't work for me and why it might not work for other people. Okay, um, my disliking it shouldn't uh, tarnish your view of the game or the miniatures. If it is, if my opinion is that much to crack your enjoyment of the game, that's probably a deeper problem there that you should really look at. Because frankly, someone else's opinion of a thing you like shouldn't greatly affect you that much. Uh, if you think that my opinion has such merit that it's ruined something forever for you, then the problem was always there, and it is real. Then have I actually ruined it for you, or are you saying that you'd rather live in ignorance? I'm not sure why people have that approach, but... Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the episode. I'm back with the Outer Circle. Thank you all for watching, and see you all 